week, I'm going to be working with several different new elements. We're going to be looking at the head section again. We're going to just get a brief introduction to CSS, Cascading Style Sheets. We'll go into them in a lot more detail in future assignments. And we're also going to work a little bit with color codes and with um, linking to new web pages. So your reference for what I'm using this week is I've got the HTML page from W3 Schools, and my references are the links page, the head page, and the CSS page. And I also have some additional references that I've pulled up with um, the W3 Schools site. I have their color page as an option, so you can go and look at some of the WebSafe colors. WebSafe colors used to be really important. When we only supported 256 different colors, there were 216 WebSafe colors that would allow everything to pretty much look the same on any computer. It's not really important today. Most computers can display millions of colors, but I have noticed that there are some colors that will look different on an Android screen versus an iPad screen, so sometimes it is important to test them still. But these are your codes of some of the common colors that you may want to use. So the project we're doing for Project 3 is we're going to create a page of links. Now I've done some things deliberately wrong on this page to show you some common errors. And there are things that I look for in grading. So I'm going to show you what I did wrong and how I look for them. So I have my image up here, and my image is a link. You can tell that it's a link because my mouse pointer changes to the image of a hand. I have two links that are going to on-page references, which will take you down the same page. Then I link back to the top. It's going to a hidden anchor on the same page. This one, I made a common programming error, and it doesn't work. I did it purposely to show you something to look for if your links are not working. I've added a horizontal rule, which is set to 80% width, and then I've added some H2 headings and some links. These links open up in a new tab. So to go back to my free previous page, I would have to click back on the old tab. These do not. These replace the current page. So to go back, I would have to hit the back button. So let's take a quick look at, a, at the code. Now I'm doing some interesting things in this page that are completely new. Let's start at the beginning. And again, to view this, it's right click and choose view source. And I've hit control plus a few times to make it easier to see my code. We're starting with my doc type, HTML head, title. You've seen all this before. This is new. We have a tag in here that's opening, style type, text slash CSS. And I'm actually putting in a whole different language here. This is cascading styles. And they define styles for different elements of the HTML page. I'm adding additional styling to the body element, the H1 element, the H2 element, and the image element. With the body tag, I'm setting your background color to this very light gray, and I pulled that from the HTML colors. I, there's two ways to define it. I typically use the hex decimal, which will always be a hash mark followed by six letters or numbers, because you can use both. They're not all letters, only up through G. And this is the one that I chose. So you can get a feel for what it's going to look like on the screen by using that. Then I've set my font for the whole thing, and when it, it's inherited, since I set it for the body, if I don't redefine it for the headers or the paragraphs, it just inherits that setting. So with the font family, I'm using Tahoma Geneva Sans Serif, and what happens is it will look for this font. If this font isn't on the user's computer, it will go to the next one, and then just a generic Sans Serif font. A serif is where you see this little line here. See how bo body has the little lines here at the top and bottom of that? That's a serif. Sans serif means without serif. If you have smaller 
typeface in a relatively low resolution monitor. And I'm saying relatively low resolution because paper can have up to 300 pixels per inch. Very crisp, very clear. Most of today's regular computer monitors are around 96 uh, pixels per inch. And so it's a little lower in resolution, and sans serif has been found to be easier to read. Now, if it's, you're printing on paper, the serifs help your eyes follow the words across the paper. Then I have my font size set to 1.5M. 1M is the size of whatever the default font is on the user's computer. So you may notice that my font sizes are probably a little larger than you see on your own computer. And it's largely because, like many Americans, I have one of the most common quote-unquote disabilities. And you may not even think of it as a disability. I wear glasses. I'm old-ish, so I wear bifocals. And I hate to wear my glasses when I'm working on my computer. And I don't really have very strong bifocals, so if I pop the size up a little bit, I don't need to wear them. So this takes into account your user settings and adjusts according to them instead of redefining with pixels. I've set the color for my H1 tag, it's a nice pretty purple, and this font size is 2M, so it's twice the size of the initial uh, character size for my page. My H2 has a text align of center, a nice shade of dark red, and a font size of 1.7. So my normal font size is 1.5, this is 1.7, and this is 2.0. Now these are also a little bit bigger because the default formatting of bolder text still, because I haven't overridden it, still matter. Then I've changed the border on my image to not have one, because in some browsers, <coughs> if you have the border activated, you'll get a blue border to represent that my image is a link. Really, all the indication that your user should need that this is a link is that my, when I mouse over it, I get the pointing hand. And so we close the style in the head section. This is how you put in an anchor. So here's my anchor, and I'm using the ID command. The ID defines and names a specific element in your page. So I have an element named top, which is the first thing inside my body tag. And then I have this really long line of code where I have my link set to a underscore blank target. This is what makes it open in a new page. And then I have that surrounding an image. I've set the image to 205 by 228. I'm going to come back to this in a second. I've got an alt tag of Mary Winchester, which is, serves two purposes. It's read by spiders, the programs that are sent out by Google and other search engines to crawl the web to catalog content. It's also going to be what appears if somebody has images turned off. And then I've done an inline style. This would override any styling that it was at, up at the top of the page because it's closer to the actual content. And in the style, I've set the image to float to the left. And anything that comes after it will stack up against it. I'll explain that in a second. I've also put padding in at 15 pixels. And then I have a title. This links to maryhelp.net. So let's take a look at what that line of code accomplishes. It puts this image in here. It puts up the title. If I click on it, it opens in a new page to maryhelp.net. If I close that, I'll go back to my previous page. But I did something I discourage in that line of code. This is something I will check for when I'm grading your papers or grading your pages. Here's my image and my associated text, and here's the actual dimensions of my image, and I just rescaled it to half the size. That is a very lazy way to do programming for the web. And while it saves you the time of having to go out into a photo editing software and resize your image into the appropriate size for the web, it means that it takes longer for your page to load because the entire large image has to load to the site and then be resized. 
I don't want you doing this, and I'm showing you, I can tell, and this is how I can tell. Okay, let's look at a couple other things here. You'll notice here I have a comment that you'll want to clear a float, a float when you don't need it anymore. So in my inline style here, and this isn't always the way you're going to do it, but in my inline style here, I am clearing the left float in a blank line that I've entered. So here, there's a blank line here, and I clear the float. This is important because if I didn't clear the float, each additional line would continue directly under my title here until I did clear it. So that's why my links are down here instead of up here. Not that that would be wrong. I just wanted to show you how to clear it. Then I have my paragraph with my links. Now these links are interesting. Because they're links to different points to anchors on this page, the hash mark tells me that I'm referring to a link on this specific page. The videos worked, the HTML didn't. You'll see if I click this, nothing happens. That takes me where I'm supposed to go. And then I can click here to go back to the top. And you'll notice if you look down at the bottom, right above the start button, it gives you the whole path, index.html hash mark top. If I wanted to go to a specific spot on another page, that's how I do that as well. So this is broken. Now I did that on purpose because I want to show you that these links are case sensitive. My link is HTML and it's all lowercase, but my ID is HTML in all caps. The ID here being caps doesn't matter, but the HTML being caps does. That's why it's broken. I have links to the different HTML references here that I like. This is what appears on screen. This is the link that opens. And because I'm using the target equals underscore blank, that's what makes it open in a new window. I've done these in a bulleted list. You'll see that the bulleted list appears here as bullets. Later, I can show you how to make those pictures. Then I have a new list, which is OL. That's an ordered list. An ordered list is a numbered list. And then inside of those ordered list tags or the unordered list tags, I have list items, LI. And so I have my links to lynda.com, tv.adobe.com, and maryhelp.net. Now these don't open in a new page. They'll replace the current page. So if I want to get back as a, a consumer or as a user, I'll have to hit the back button to get back when it's done that way. It's very common when you're creating a link that takes you off your own site to have that open in a completely new page. And most web users are used to that format. And that's pretty much the end of this page, just closing out my bottom tags. So for your homework, you're going to put in 15 different items broken down into at least three categories. You'll link to those categories from the top. I want one image that's a link somewhere in the page and play with some CSS, just setting some basic colors, maybe the font family, change your background color, play with it a little based on my sample.